say my American flag key tags are back in stock, as you can see, available at the first link down below. Check them out. Well, folks, good night and welcome to the channel. It is nighttime. Uh, sorry for no upload last night. I was uh, out of town with the family for a family event as I was all day today. But I didn't want to go two days without an upload, so I figured I would talk about something that just got here today. Very exciting, and I can't wait to show you guys what the modification is. Um, so the product is from a company called Royalty Core. And I'm not sure if you guys have heard of them before, but they make a lot of the grills that you see on these new SEMA trucks, like the crazy grills. Some of them have light bars in them. They have a new uh, logo that says like either Power Stroke or Cummins or whatever, rather than, you know, the Dodge logo or the Ford logo. Really cool. And it is here in the box. Now, I have not taken it out yet, so we are going to be discovering it together and seeing it for the first time together. Now, I ordered this about... Uh, about three weeks ago, I was hoping it would be here in time for uh, Motorama, but it was not. It takes them a while to build it, which is understandable, and it's really cool. You can tell by the weight of it. It's all metal. Um, it's, it's pretty sick. So if you can picture the front of my truck, like my year Duramax, it has the grill in between the headlights, and then it has like a little piece of the grill that extends and cuts the headlights in half. And that is this piece here, and you can see that it is color matched. This is metal, by the way. I don't know if you can... I don't know if you can hear it, but this is metal, and you can see I have it color matched in the Duramax's silver birch metallic, and those are the little grill arms, so that's what's in these packages. By the way, if you guys order something from Royalty Core, and no, this is not a sponsored video, if you order from them, you can see they pack everything really nice, like they put a felt, like, cloth material in just to pack it up and make it really cool, and it seems really well done to me. So anyway, let's take out the main piece here. This is another grill arm. And we're not going to install it tonight because it is nighttime and that kind of sucks. But we're at least going to see what it looks like. And they got it all taped up all nice here. Right there, it should be fine. Take this off. See what we got. And they've got the logo uh, already bolted in. As you can, I don't know if you can see that. But... I can't wait to see what the logo looks like. That's the most exciting part is the new logo for the truck. Oh, are you ready? <laughs> oh, check that out. Holy shit, that looks cool, doesn't it? Oh my God, look at that. That is really badass. Really, really badass. God, I love that. It's all metal. Holy shit. Let me know what you think in the comments, but uh, first impression here is that is gonna look so nasty. So I went for the, of course, the black, the black mesh, and then the Duramax. This is actually not just silver. This outline, it's color matched to the truck. It's the same color, silver birch metallic, as the grill arms, and of course, the truck itself underneath the wrap. So I went for that really cool touch, which I'm glad I did because that is neat. That's gonna look so cool. So imagine like the truck unwrapped, in its normal color, and that is gonna match it. That should look really cool. And there is the Royalty Core logo there. Black studs, you can do them in chrome, but I figured all black would look cool. And then, like, the arms are going to stick out on the sides, you know, kind of like, kind of like that. Imagine that on the Duramax, with its new lift and the Baja rack and everything. It's like the, the perfect final touch for this new build. Well, there you go. There is the Dirty Max's latest modification. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below, but I'm pretty hype about it. I also wanted to mention that I am very sorry for the GoPro audio when like I turn the camera, whenever I am doing something, you can hear like a real weird muffled noise. I found out how to stop it. And uh, so this will be the last video that you have to hear that. All right, and we're gonna finish up with a real quick Q&A here. Uh, again, sorry, not too much action going on in the video, but this week ahead should be nice. Weather's gonna be good. It's been raining for the past two days. Just really shitty, and I do apologize. But uh, yeah, great week coming up. We are gonna finally do a fucking pool, and that thing, I know you guys have been waiting for it, as have I. Uh, unfortunately, I had one nice day when I first got it home, and I didn't really feel like taking it out. Um, I drove the McLaren, and I made a video with it, which I'm gonna show later on. But, uh, you know, and then it, it rained, and it's been so cold, like, I can't do a fucking pool in that car in, I mean, I don't really want to do a pool if it's less than, like, 50 degrees and sunny. Um, but tomorrow is supposed to be decent, and we should get at least a good, a good run, one good run in on that thing. 
Um, so again, here is the Q and A. If you would like to follow me on Instagram for the next Q and A, uh, my Instagram is streetspeed717, exactly the same as the YouTube channel. And here we go. We've got uh, 287 comments in three minutes, which is crazy. Thank you guys for the support. And uh, the first one is, are you gay? He says, uh, I am not. I think so. Nate the Great, 42. Will you ever come to Minnesota? I can't imagine why, but uh, maybe at some point. I'm not, it's not like I hate Minnesota. Dylan Mezich, when are you coming to Texas? Well, Texas 2K uh, would be cool to go to, especially now that I got something that's actually, you know, pretty quick. I mean, it's nothing compared to half the shit they run down there in Texas, but it's fast. Oh, damn it, I lost my spot. Here we go. I gotta go all the way back up to the top. Go to Taco Official. What was the most discouraging thing when you first started making videos? Well, I actually, I really didn't get discouraged because I never thought, like when I started a YouTube channel, I never thought it would go anywhere. So I didn't have any expectations. And if you have no expectations, there's nothing to be discouraged by about, or you know, there's, you're not gonna be let down. So if you are getting into YouTube, I would say get into it for the right reasons. You know, and I've said this many times before, if you're gonna start making videos, don't do it for the money. You know, don't do it for the fame and th not that it's, you know, it's not really fame. But, you know, don't do it for that. Do it because you like it. And if you like it, chances are then you might be successful. But I've heard so many people say like, oh, you know, I'm gonna, people are making so much money, I'm gonna make all this money. And, and guess what? They never get anywhere because if you start a YouTube channel thinking you're gonna make a lot of money, uh, you are definitely setting up yourself for disappointment. It takes a long time for most people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's your life. You know, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Hamilton 7, kind of on that same point, what would life be like without YouTube? I don't know. It would be much more boring for me. I can tell you that. Like this, the fact that I found this life is really, I mean, a total blessing for me. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'd be doing. I mean, probably, I mean, I'd be all right. I had a successful job. You know, I'd, I have you know, intelligence. Like I would be okay. It's not like I would be a wreck. But I'm just really happy to be where I am now. And, and, you know, to do something I really love every single day is crazy. Will you come to California? Yes, Salamaj and I have been talking about doing some type of collab. I want to get out to California soon. And, of course, to see my buddy Parker. Are you going to mod the ZR1? Yes. When is the wedding for you and Andy? Uh, we already had our wedding a few years ago. Can I buy your Corrado for 2000 bucks? No. When's the next wrap for the Dirty Max Z06 coming? Uh, the Duramax, I'm probably going to unwrap it pretty soon. I think it's been on, the, the Arctic Cam has been on for like, I don't know, what, four or five months now. And uh, I want to rock it with the paint for a while. And then we'll talk about a different wrap. But also I have talked about just getting that truck repainted and maybe not wrap for a while. The Corvette I think looks really cool. And of course I have my matching helmet now. So I don't see that. Quit digging in the garbage. I don't think I'll be, I'll be doing that. Uh, doing a new wrap on that anytime soon. When's the next mod for the McLaren? Well, I think I already got an exhaust, which is really all you can do. I don't want to tune it because I don't want to lose my warranty, but I do want to get some, some wheels for it. So I think, um, you know, before the season really kicks off, like maybe at some point in March or April, May, uh, I'll get some wheels for it. Thoughts on banning the bump stock? Yeah, I think bump stock should be banned. I think that maybe go all out and just ban every type of semi-automatic rifle just because or you should have to get a license to carry them, a, a special license to have one and, and prove that you're mentally sound and everything because the gun violence in America is ridiculous. And uh, you know, you're gonna have mentally ill people everywhere. The only difference is in this country, mentally ill people can buy firearms. And I know that, I know, especially with my audience, I know that I'm gonna get roasted for this, but picture it this way. I'm a guy who owns multiple assault style weapons. And uh, even I think that the ability to buy guns in this country is way too easy and crazy. And people often compare them to cars. People often say like, oh, we're gonna ban cars. Well, first of all, you know, the purpose of a gun is to kill people. Now, yeah, you can use them to hunt and there are hunting rifles, but really when you look at like an AR-15 or my scar or any gun like that, the primary purpose, they were made to kill people in war. A car, yeah, you know, sometimes people do unfortunately use cars to run people over. Sometimes you do have automobile accidents, but the main point of a car is to get from point A to point B, not to kill people. And, you know, it's traditionally, if you have an, an attack with a car, it's a lot less lethal than with a gun, obviously. And you look at a car, like think of all you have to do to get a car. Like when you turn 18 in this country, you can walk into a gun store and buy a gun. You can buy any gun you want, except for a pistol, you have to be 21. You have to be 21 to have a pistol, which makes no sense to me. You should probably have to be 21 to buy anything. And people often use the military argument, well, you can't expect 
you know, kids should be allowed to have a gun, but they can defend their country. Well, guess what? You, you're allowed to go die in war and not buy a beer either. So I don't think it's like the end all be all just because just because you can do one thing that's like life threatening or whatever doesn't automatically mean you should be able to do all things. But anyway, you look at a car. OK, so when you're 16 or whatever your state's laws are, you can get a permit. And to get your permit, you have to prove that, you know, the the rules of the road and you have to prove that you have basic concepts of driving and you understand it and you understand the risk and you have to take a class and you have to have education and do all that. Then you can get a permit. Then you can drive with a parent or guardian. Then you have to have so many hours in the car with the parent or guardian. You have to drive at night. You have to drive in the rain. You have to do all that. You have to drive off. And after you've had the permit and you haven't had any violations, you can take a test to get your license and you have to take a written test and you have to go out on the road. Now, I still think the license test is a, is a total joke and it should be harder. But you have to do all that. When you get a car, you have to have a valid driver's license. The government, you know, you're, you're tracked by your driver's license. You have to get the car titled. Uh, the car itself has to go through how, I mean, when you're a car manufacturer, how many thousands and thousands of regulations are there to make sure the car is safe, to make sure it's roadworthy, uh, just to make sure, I mean, right down to the emissions, everything. I mean, think of all the regulation that goes into building a car. And you have to, like I said, you have to have that car titled. You have to have that car registered. You have to have yearly inspections. You have to make sure the car is safe. You have to do, you have to have insurance on the car. You have to do all this shit for a car. And again, it's just a car and a gun, which is a lot more lethal than a car and should probably have a lot more regulations on it. You just walk in and buy one. So, you know, I think it, I think it's definitely ridiculous. And I'm, uh, I'm sad that it took this long and I'm glad that we're finally talking about it and it looks like something is gonna get done. But, you know, honestly, with the events uh, of Sandy Hook, that was, besides 9-11, which I also lived through, and I'm, I was old enough to remember it, that was the most horrifying thing I think I've ever seen and heard of. And when nothing was done after that, I really kind of lost hope. And keep in mind, you know, I'm, I'm a gun owner. I love guns. I've shot them many times on the, on the channel. But there's a way to make this safer. And the mental health thing is good and we should focus on that, but that's not the end all be all because, you know, again, people, human beings everywhere have mental health problems, but human beings everywhere aren't killing people. And also, you know, would the mental health thing stop a few of these? Yeah. But if you look at the events in Las Vegas, there was nothing that that guy, there was no indication that that guy had a mental Ill illness or any mental issues at all. A lot of these people, they haven't done a single illegal thing right up until the point where they start pulling the trigger. And, you know, even this kid, like, yeah, the police were called to his house 39 times. Like, yeah, he had a history of being a kind of a crazy dude. He was posting pictures on Facebook and Instagram of him with guns and, you know, talking about wanting to shoot people and all that stuff. But even all of that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but from a law enforcement standpoint, I don't think any of that, it, like it's not illegal to love guns. It's not illegal to post a picture of guns. It's not even illegal to say like, I would like to use this gun on people. Now, if you make a direct threat against somebody in particular, that's illegal. But to my knowledge and looking at it, not, none of what he did would have gotten his gun taken away anyway. So, you know, we, we have to do something and I'm glad that we are finally doing something. I've often heard about like the second amendment and you can't talk about, oh, you, you can't ban the second amendment. Nobody's talking about banning all guns. I haven't heard a single person say that. And it's funny that a lot of super gun people say that because we already have tons of regulations on the second amendment. We have like people, people act like, oh, you're going to, you're going to draw the line at like banning bump stocks and assault rifles. That's where you draw the line. It, when it comes to the second amendment, we already have laws on how old you have to be to buy a gun. Again, a handgun is 21, a rifle is 18. We have laws banning all kinds of different guns. The, the normal citizen can't go out and buy a light machine gun. You can't buy a rocket launcher. You can't buy, I mean, if you're going to say that like the second amendment means that you just, you do whatever you want, then why can't I go buy a tank? I'm a law abiding citizen. I should be allowed to go buy a tank. I should be allowed to have nuclear weapons. I mean, if that's the argument you're going to take, that, that's where you have to go with it. You know, you can't just say, well, I guess that, that would be not okay. Well, of course that's not okay. So there's already, there's already plenty of sensible uh, restrictions on the second amendment as there should be. And the other argument with that is that, you know, people often say like, oh, it's for a it's for the government if they turn against us. Look, two things about that argument, about the the government turning against us argument, which I get it. The Second Amendment was, was written because we were supposed to defend ourselves against Great Britain and against a tyrannical government. I get that. But 
two problems with that argument today. Number one, our government is a democracy. It's a democratic republic. And our military, for example, is volunteer. So our military is volunteer citizens that join under their own will. And they're people, like my brother is in the military. My grandfather was in the military. Like these are regular people. They're not gonna turn against us. There are sons and daughters and brothers and fathers and mothers and sisters. It's not like it's a, a dictatorship where the military is hired and they're you know part of a certain faction that wants to kill the other faction, the other half of the country. That's not how it works here. So the government, like, okay, the president could be like, all right, we're going to turn on the people. Do you think the military is going to do it? You think they're going to do it? They're not going to do it. Like they're, they're citizens like us. And what are you suggesting that you're going to fight our, our government? You're going to fight our military. You're going to kill your friends and family that are in the military. You're going to shoot at them too. It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. And also let's just say for the sake of the sake of the argument, let's just say that our government and our military did turn against us. What do you think you're going to do with your little AR-15 against a fucking tank or a helicopter or a stealth bomber? Or like the argument that like the Second Amendment is going like you, like citizens having their guns is going to protect against the government is insane from both from both directions. Number one, it's not going to happen. That makes no sense. Number two, if it did happen, you'd be fucked anyway. Being said, I think the Second Amendment is totally should be followed. I again, I'm a gun owner. I can't stress that enough. I think you should be allowed to have a gun in your home. You should be allowed to have a gun within reason if you are if you can prove yourself to be safe with it. I think it's totally reasonable. And I want to have a gun to defend myself, and I think you should be allowed to carry a gun. But again, you got to have like you got to be sensible about it. Just like there's, I love cars. There, how many restrictions are there on cars? Hundreds of them. And it's gotta be that way with guns. I think we're gonna end there. Sorry this went on for so long, but it is a topic that I feel is important and clearly I'm pretty passionate about it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you are stopping in for the first time, please subscribe. Take care, have a great day.